Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community, where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Hebrews chapter 7, but before we get started, I wanted to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Hebrews chapter 7. This Melchizedek was king of the city of Salem and also a priest of God Most High. When Abraham was returning home after winning a great battle against the kings, Melchizedek met him and blessed him. Then Abraham took a tenth of all he had captured in battle and gave it to Melchizedek. The name Melchizedek means king of justice and king of Salem means king of peace. There is no record of his father or mother or any of his ancestors, no beginning or end to his life. He remains a priest forever, resembling the Son of God. Consider then how great this Melchizedek was. Even Abraham, the great patriarch of Israel, recognized this by giving him a tenth of what he had taken in battle. Now the law of Moses requires that the priests, who are descendants of Levi, must collect a, a tithe from the rest of the people of Israel, who are also descendants of Abraham. But Melchizedek, who was not a descendant of Levi, collected a tenth from Abraham. And Melchizedek placed a blessing upon Abraham, the one who had already received the promise of promises of God. And without question, the person who has the power to give a blessing is greater than the one who is blessed. The priests who collect tithe are men who die, so Melchizedek is greater than they are, because we are told that he lives on. In addition, we might even say that the Levites, the ones who collect the tithe, paid a tithe to Melchizedek when their ancestor Abraham paid a tithe to him. For although Levi wasn't born yet, the seed from which he came was in Abraham's body when Melchizedek collected the tithe from him. So if the priesthood of Levi, on which the law was based, could have achieved the perfection God intended, why did God need to establish a different priesthood with a priest in the order of Melchizedek instead of the order of Levi and Aaron? And if the priesthood is changed, the law must also be changed to permit it. For the priest we are talking about belongs to a different tribe, whose members have never served at the altar as priests. What I mean is our Lord came from the tribe of Judah, and Moses never mentioned priests coming from that tribe. This change, this change has been made very clear since a different priest, who is like Melchizedek, has appeared. Jesus became a priest, not by meeting the physical requirements of belonging to the tribe of Levi, but by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. <clears throat> and the psalmist pointed, out, pointed this out when he prophesied, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Yes, the old requirement about the priesthood was set aside because it was weak and useless. For the law never made anything perfect. But now we have confidence in a better hope through which we draw near to God. This new system was established with a solemn oath. Aaron's descendants became priests without such an oath. But there was an oath regarding Jesus, for God said to him, The Lord has taken an oath and will not break his vow. You are a priest forever. Because of this, Jesus is the one who guarantees this better covenant with God. There were many priests under the old system, for death prevented them from remaining in office. But Jesus lives forever. His priesthood lasts forever. Therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. He is the kind of high priest we need because he is holy and blameless, unstained by sin. He has been set apart from sinners and has been given the highest place of honor in heaven. 
Unlike those other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices every day. They did this for their own sins, first and then for the sins of the people. But Jesus did this once for all when he offered himself as a sacrifice for the people's sin. The law appointed high priests who were limited by human weakness. But after the law was given, God appointed his son with an oath, and his son has been made the perfect high priest forever. Amen. So what did you think of Hebrews chapter 7? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments below too so we can pray together as a community. Okay, so the very first section of Hebrews chapter 7 is talking about um, comparing um, the old high priest from the tribe of Levi to Jesus. So they're just going through the um, order of how it all began. And they start off with who is this Melchizedek that we're claiming. It's, it says that in yesterday we learned that he has become our eternal high priest in the order of Melchizedek. So who is Melchizedek? Um, so it goes through the kind of the history of it from the Old Testament where Abraham, um, it says that when... Um, he was the king over Salem, and he was a priest of God. And when Abraham was returning home after winning a great battle against the kings, Melchizedek met him and blessed him. Um, so then Abraham took a tenth of all he had captured and gave it to Melchizedek, and then Melchizedek blessed him. Um, or no, he blessed him first, and then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything that he had. He had. And it says so, um, and it's going to show that he didn't have, there's no record of his father or mother or any of his ancestors, um, no beginning or end to his life. Um, he remains a priest forever, resembling the Son of God. So that's where the comparison is. And then it goes in to say, um, in verse 7, it says, Without question, the person who has the power to give to, to give a blessing is greater than the one who is blessed. And I love this because when you are able to bless somebody, God has put you in a position um, that you should be grateful for. It is so much better to be able to bless someone than to be the one who is receiving. And, you know, obviously if you're receiving, you're blessed, but the person who is giving is way more blessed. It is such a great feeling to be able to give and to be in that position to be able to give willingly and freely um, the the way that God works on your heart to be able to give generously. So that's one of my favorite verses, just as a reminder. And I love how this um, recounts the story of how Abraham started tithing before tithing was even a thing. Um, and then, um, then it goes into how the Levites were um, collected a tenth fr from the rest of the people of Israel and... Um, and in, in that sense, they use that, the, he, um, the Levites blessed the Israelites, you know, they offered sacrifices to atone for their sins and, and, and um, furthermore. So it says the priests who collected tithes are men who die. So Melchizedek is greater than they are. Um, so obviously they're saying that Melchizedek is better than the Levites. Um, and then it says, so if the priests are of Levi on which the law was based could have achieved the perfection God intended why did God need to establish a different priesthood with a priest in the order of Melchizedek instead of the order of Levi and Aaron so then it's saying like why if the law was so good why would God you know in turn you know send Jesus here so it's basically saying that all, all of that <laughs> was to say that um, that God sent his son because what was going on wasn't right. The priests that were blessing us and the priests that were, um, you know, offering, you know, performing the sacrificial rituals, you know, to sacrifice to atone for sins were in themselves um, full of weakness. They had to offer sacrifices for themselves before they could offer sacrifices for the people. Um, so in, it says that um, this change has made very clear that since a different priest who is like Melchizedek, so without a beginning or an end, um, somebody who is eternal, um, has appeared, Jesus became a high priest, not by meeting the physical requirements. So Jesus is a high priest, not because he was of the tribe of Levi, because obviously he was from Judah, 
but because he was um, the son of God. And it says, because God swore that oath, because God blessed him and put him in that position. And it says that um, in verse 19, for the law never made anything perfect, but now we have confidence in a better hope through which we draw near to God. So now we have something better than the law. We have Jesus Christ, which is in, who is inside of us. And it shows the authority that he has by, it says the new system was established with a solemn oath. Um, and it's saying that the Levites never had this kind of oath from God. And it says, but there was an oath regarding Jesus for God said to him, the Lord has taken an oath and will not break his vow. You are a priest forever. And then it goes into say how the Levites, there's so many of them because they die, their flesh, you know, they have to continuously be replaced. They can only work so many years and then they, um, they have a replacement. So it says, um, because Jesus lives forever, his priesthood lasts forever. Therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. So he lives forever to be that intercessor. It doesn't have to change up. He is forever and always the same. And it says he is the kind of high priest we need because he is holy and blameless and unstained by sin. So it, you know, um, I'm reminded again about the Catholic Church, how we are always, you know, they they have you going into a booth and confessing to a, um, a, a priest who is um, who is um, full of sin, just like we are. So how can that person really help us to uh, atone for our sins? So that's why we have Jesus. Um, I hope that may have made sense. I feel like it, it, it was confusing, but we have Jesus who is blameless and who is holy that will intercede on our behalf. Um, we don't, we're not asking somebody who is just as, as sinful as we are to intercede for us. We are, Jesus is there interceding for us so that, um, we can be forgiven of our sins. And it says that, um, Unlike those other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices every day. So he doesn't have to sacrifice every day to atone for our sins. He did it once for everyone's sins. And it says the law appointed high priests who are limited in human weakness. But after the law was given, God appointed his son with an oath. And his son has been made the perfect high priest forever. So while they had all these other high priests, Jesus is the perfect high priest because he is sinless, holy, and blameless. And he sacrificed himself once and for all. <laughs> so it does not need to be redone or performed all the time or over and over again every time we sin. And that's why he is the perfect high priest. So that is my interpretation of Hebrews chapter 7. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you stay blessed, stay in God's presence, and have a great rest of your day. I love you.